Happy Monday, everyone. This is Martha with Nature Niche. And this week, I thought I would add to my collection of eruptive migrating finch species and talk to you about pine siskin. Uh, last winter, I shared um, evening grosbeak and Monday with Martha number 41 and common red poles um, in post number 42. And uh, this year, I've been seeing a lot of pine siskins lately. Uh, they may monopolize your feeder um, one winter and then be absent in subsequent years. So this is the, the first year I've really noticed them in numbers. They do range erratically across the continent each winter. And... Um, at least in part in response to food resources, things like uh, coniferous seed crops in the north. And per banding data, um, some fly from the west to the eastern part of the United States, while others move um, from the north uh, to the south. And in general, this species breeds in southern Alaska, across Canada, um, and in the northern U.S. and the Rocky Mountains, it is a year-round resident. Um, in Michigan, in our upper peninsula and the tip of the mitt of the lower peninsula, it can be a year-round resident. Um, but in the lower two-thirds of that lower peninsula, uh, usually it is only a winter visitor. As far as habitat goes, the species nests in open coniferous and mixed coniferous and deciduous forests. Um, as well as uh, in parks and cemeteries and suburban woodlands um, where it can use ornamental, um, both coniferous and deciduous trees. Uh, they do prefer to forage among the branch tips of conifers, um, looking for the, the seeds of cones, um, but they will also use diverse habitats like deciduous woodlands, um, thickets, meadows, grasslands, old fields, roadsides, and uh, backyard gardens and lawns with feeders well stocked with uh, small seeds. And sometimes they can be attracted to mineral deposits like salt along our roadways as well. As far as identification goes, uh, males and females look similar and uh, you should look for a small, very streaky looking striped songbird um, with a sharp pointed little bill. Uh, their bills are about the half the size of most finch species and they have a short notched tail. Um, I think they look like from a distance, slightly brown, a little bit more drab um, then the goldfinches, but otherwise at a distance without a zoom lens or your binoculars, they can look very similar to um, our American goldfinches. In flight or when they're fluttering their wings and spreading their tails, you might notice um, some yellow patches um, on the wings and along the tail. Uh, they are very gregarious finches and you'll often see them in tight flocks uh, foraging. Um, and then you can also hear them. They have a kind of wheezing, uh, twittering sound. Uh, they talk to each other incessantly. Also known for a harsh, like watch winding call, or it's likened to slowly tearing um, a piece of paper. So I'll share a clip of them um, making these noises in my backyard a couple of days ago. As far as food preferences go, as their name indicates, they like the seeds of pines and other 
um, coniferous species, including cedars, larch, hemlock, and spruce. They will also eat the seeds of um, deciduous trees and shrubs like alder, birch, sweet gum, and maples. And they'll eat the buds of willows, elms, and maples. So those are good native species you can plant to support them. Um, they'll also glean seeds off of uh, grasses, dandelions, chickweed. I saw them on my um, sunflower, my native sunflower seed heads. Um, and ragweed. During the breeding season, they'll glean insects and spiders and grubs from branch tips and um, leaves high in the canopy. Um, and they can also occasionally grab insects right out of the air. Um, at backyard feeders, they prefer um, small seeds without tough shells, including niger, hulled sunflower, millet, um, and they can also eat pieces of seeds scavenged from larger billed birds, um, like my cardinals, um, eating the black oil sunflower seeds. So um, they may also occasionally eat suet. So I, I've seen them personally eat um, from the suet feeder. They really like the Finch favorite mix with sunflower hearts and niger. Um, and some of the shell-free mixes with lots of sunflower hearts um, or chips and um, or mixes that have sunflower hearts and millet in them. I've seen them consume all of those things with uh, great vigor. And uh, they also seem to really like my heated bird bath. Any source of water in the winter um, is, is welcome. Uh, and they may also drink from sap wells drilled by sap suckers. As far as nesting goes, they'll nest in loose colonies um, with neighbors just a few trees away. Um, they prefer mid-height in conifers, uh, well concealed. And uh, the males and I think mostly the female um, builds the cup-shaped nest um, out of twigs and grasses, leaves, stems, roots, um, bark and lichen and then line it with an inch to two and a half inches of fur feathers, um, moss and thistle down. And uh, that's one of many adaptations they have to cold weather. Um, the female also stays on the nest to incubate full time and the male um, brings her food um, to get through cold nights. They can increase their metabolic rate really quickly, um, something like 40% higher than other songbirds, their size, because they're trying to survive in some places, um, nights that get down to negative 94 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, they also put on half again as much fat as um, common red poles or American goldfinches, birds um, similar in size. They can store up to 10% of their body mass in seeds in their um, crops, which is the, the bird equivalent of an esophagus. Um, and that can help get them through five to six nighttime hours with uh, sub-zero temps. And um, thinking about their conservation, this is a fairly common species in steep decline. So it scores a 10 out of 20 on the Continental Concern score. Um, and, you know, their eruptive migrations make it difficult to estimate, um, but partners in flight estimate their populations have declined by 80% since uh, 1970. So uh, part of that, like the adult birds or um, eggs and young can be preyed upon by domestic cats, um, also, naturally, by red squirrels, hawks, jays, and crows. Um, there may be some um, studies indicate local impacts from DDT and related pesticides, as well as cyanide used in gold mines. Um, because they're attracted to mineral deposits and salt, they may be more prone to like motor collisions along roadways. Um, and also suffering from loss of habitat from deforestation. Although it does seem that they'll use commercially planted coniferous forests and um, 
ornamental trees for nesting, so it's, it's hopeful maybe some of those habitats may support them in the future. Um, they do, um, because they live in dense flocks, they are prone to salmonellosis um, outbreaks, uh, especially at feeders. So make sure you watch um, Monday with Martha number 43, uh, where I discuss in detail what to look for with that um, bacterial infection in birds. Um, but basically it can pass bird to bird or through fecal contamination of food and water. Uh, so one of the things you can do as you see uh, more pine siskins around your feeders, just make sure um, that you are regularly cleaning your feeders and your bird baths um, anywhere fecal matter um, can accumulate. I decided to, to take down um, my tray feeders, um, anything that yeah, it was trapping um, a lot of bird feces and um, have emphasized my, my tube feeders um, this winter since I'm seeing a lot more of the pine siskins. Um, and certainly if you see um, birds that you suspect are sick with um, salmonellosis, you, you'll want to uh, remove your feeders, disinfect them. You may need to keep them down one to two weeks to help disperse the birds in your area. Um, and then again, it's always great consider planting and conserving uh, native tree and shrub species or other native plants to help provide natural food sources um, spread out across the landscape for these um, flocks of uh, gregarious pine siskins. But I hope you get to enjoy them this winter too and have a good week.